Welcome back all, this is Daz from Motorola Techniques. So up this week we're looking at using RFID technology to uh, track our trains throughout the layout. So what is RFID? RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. So it's just some simple, reasonably inexpensive technology that sits on the layer, the reader sits underneath the track. There's a little RFID tag that sits on the wagon or locomotive and as the train goes across it, it feeds data back into the system. So basically what I want to end up doing with it is getting that data to come across to Google, Google Sheets or some sort of Excel type program where I can make switch lists out of it for my operating sessions. So without further ado, let's get started. So what we're going to first look at is gathering all the materials we need now. So the, the board I'm using is the Arduino Uno board here. You can use other boards, but obviously that's, that's the one I'm using for this sketch. Uh, we've got some jumper wires here. Got three at this point in time. Along the bottom here, the RFID tags. Obviously you're going to say how they're going to fit in a, a carriage, as long as they're the 125 megahertz. So this is just the, my testing ones. They're like little fobs that, that came with, with the reader. So just whilst we're on the reader, it's the EM18 reader that I'm looking at using because that'll fit nicely underneath the track. There is other versions of, of readers. So this is the RFID RC522. So that will use different frequency of tags. So that one, and you gotta, when we go through the, the sketch shortly, um, I'll show you where you need to change that because it brings in different libraries and the like. Now this sketch does have um, the facility on pin number seven, and I'll bring up the Arduino. I'll bring up the Arduino schematic of the Uno shortly, or you can use a buzzer. So each time it detects a tag, it'll either flash, which I'll probably do on the layout, or a buzzer. I think a buzzer, from my point of view, get a little bit annoying. Then we've got the the power here at this point in time, just to the the USB. So you can power these internally. So once they're out in the layout, you can bring bring five volts into uh, the Uno quite quite easily. So step number two, we're going to look at the wiring setup. So now we've got all our components together, all bar the the LED. Um, for the final product, I might show you what the LED looks like, but at this point in time, we'll just keep this very, very simple. So I've got a few pictures up on the screen there. So the pins we're going to be looking at using on Sketch here. Let's go over to the Arduino Sketch. So basically all we're looking at, there's, there's only three pins that we're, we're looking at connecting. So we're looking at using digital pin number two. We're going to be looking at the five volt and the ground. We'll just quickly go over to the e EM18. So what we're looking at using is on here, we've only, only got three connections as well. So the VCC, so that's what we'll call the positive five volts in. We're gonna be using the ground and then this, this data transfer pin, which is the one that's gonna to go to pin two. So we'll just quickly go over, I'll insert some video now. So we've got the power here the five volt at the top there, we've got the, the ground there, and then we've got the, the RX pin of, sorry, the TX pin of the of the EM18 going to digital pin number two. What we'll quickly do, um, so this code here I made on, on ChatGPT. I did a previous video on that, I will link in the description below. So just having a bit of a play how that may look, and it's actually quite a little bit of fun, and it's quite a powerful um, AI. So, what we need to look at doing is we'll go through the, the libraries. Now, I'm not going to go dive. There's plenty of videos out there regarding what the libraries are. So the first one we need to do is this software serial. And that's the library that creates a serial port on the digital pins. Then the next one we need to define the LED on pin number seven, which is I'm not connecting the, the LED at this point in time. But that's what it goes. Um, the cathode goes on to pin number seven. Now the big one is obviously because we're using the EM18, we need to download that library as well. And that creates a software serial instance on pin number two, which is the, the, the RX pin, uh, num pin number two on the... So now we're gonna look into the train structure. So 
the pin has a unique numbering system. So this is them here. So each RFID tag has just that number. So what you need to do, I'll show you how to, in an upcoming, how we actually might, might just scan that number and then we can give it its own unique name. And that's all added within the sketch. So this next section is the, the UID and the train name. So this is where all the magic happens in this section here. So basically what, what, what we can do um, on line number 21 here, you can see that we've got a serial print. So serial print means it's going to come out onto the monitor down the bottom here, um, serial monitor, which I'll show you shortly. Now that you can put anything as long as it's in between those adverted commas, so to speak. So this is Belay Yard Departure West. So that could be, so it lists what particular location within your layout that the the RFID reader may be. That's what that's how I'm doing it. So at this point in time we're only looking at 10, 10 trains or twin 10 entities. So a train here is any wagon, locomotive, boxcar, gondola, anything. That's that's a train. So you just need to change that number. Obviously you're going to have more than 10 potentially. That's where you look at doing that. So we'll go down to line number 32. So that's the example of adding the train. So as I said, the unique number, and it's just a matter of scanning that tag, and then it will pop up there, and then populating that number in there, and then you can put whatever you wish to do in there. So let's go to my box car, KPEV. KPEV is the railway, the 545, which is the, I always use the last three digits of my road numbers. So when you scan that code, when you scan that tag, it's going to pop up box KPEV 545. And that's sort of how then it denotes which which wagon has just gone through that reader. So very, very quickly in this the, the loop function function, I should say. So all it's doing is it reads the data from the RFID reader, compares it to the UID, which is up the top here, with your predefined UID numbers. It triggers the LED or the buzzer if, the, if what you got attack, uh, attached, I should say, and then displays the name in the serial monitor. That's pretty well what it's doing. So what we'll quickly do, we'll uh, go over to the bench and I'll show you what it looks like when you're scanning the tag. But before we do that, we'll just, just go over to my sponsor, pcbway.com and have a message for them. So over to you guys. PCBWay offers a variety of services ranging from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing, CNC machining, in a variety of materials. If you do not have the correct tools for the job, you can quickly upload your Gerber file for a PCB and press enter and get a quote in no time at all. Then select your material, finish and other post-processing customization like PCB assembly where all the components are added. If you are new to PCBs, their professional review team will review your file and notify you once they are good to be manufactured. This makes PCB Way a good option for your projects. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this. All right, so what we'll look at doing, we're gonna look at scanning this tag here and putting it into the UID that we were talking about before within the sketch. So as you can see, I've already scanned it just to make sure it works properly. Um, but you can see when you power up over here on the, the screen, or the screenshot here is Belay Yard Departure West. So that's obviously whatever you put there. So whenever you power up the system, you know which which scanner it is, particularly if you've got multiple scanners that you're gonna have throughout the layout. So we'll quickly just run this over. All right, so you can see when you power it up, you get the Belay Yard, so the, the location of where the RFID reader is. Now I've just scanned that tag, and that is the unique number there, which is the same string up here. So if I want to now add that to my train, what I now, all I need to do is I just copy and paste, add and then enter. And I now know I need to get rid of that number there. Copy and paste, and then I'm gonna go, and I know this is my brake car. And then you upload that sketch again to here so it'll recognize that new tag number so what i'll i'll just clear that off and then i'll show you what it's going to look like 
without unplugging it. Brake car KPEV. All right, so what that's going to then look like in the real world, let's just clear that off. So you imagine this is imagine this is a train. So it's just a matter of the locomotive comes up and all the wagons. And that would be your 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 train. So four wagons and a locomotive. So obviously that's uh, just it the that's just it in its uh, very crude form now. So step number five, we're gonna obviously look, we've showed you um, some testing. So it is a little bit of trial and error and I've yet to, to do this myself, but placing the, the RFID reader within the track. Now it's obviously meant to probably be cut between the tires and the like. So you might just wanna, depending on how, how you wanna run this system, you might wanna put it in between um, sort of like out of a staging area which is what I'm planning on doing now and then you got to obviously play around with depending on which RFID ready you have and tags to sort of have a play around with the height of how it needs to be and how how close to the track so you don't get erroneous uh, detections so obviously as I've showed you if if it is running smoothly it will come up onto the the serial monitor some are thinking, well, that's a little bit antiquated. So what I'm going to be looking at doing in a subsequent video when I learn how to do it is actually morphing this this sketch, so to speak, and bringing it over so we can actually send that data across to a, a Google sheet. And then I, what I plan to do then is off the Google sheet, making up some sort of switch list. And this is ultimately where we're going to we're going to lead with this. All right. So there you have it. Um, very very entry level way into your very own automated train detection system um it's obviously got um obviously a few pitfalls there's a little bit little bit of work up front but i'll as i sort of start to work on this sketch a little bit more when i get some more time i'll obviously as I said as I, i'll look at putting it into to google docs and making it a little more more useful that's the end of the video so thanks for watching i hope you had as much fun as i did putting this together using the sketch from chat gpt and sort of just massaging it and doing what i needed to do to it um, if you have any questions or need a little extra guidance don't hesitate to reach out in the comments below also i've got my email address that will be in the description also and like always i've always got three questions uh, question number one is, is this the sort of system that you might look at using? Um, if so, please comment below what you're using. I know there are some more, not industrial, but uh, more systems out there that are put together by some, some like-minded modelers that have got more coding ability than what I've got that, that, that sell them, obviously. Um, this is just a, a very introduction journey into mine. Um, two is, if so, if you do, have a system such as this what are you using what sort of detection are you using i still haven't gone down the line of what tags i'm going to use i know you can get little tags that look like um and they're used for putting into microchipping um dogs and animals here in my part of the world anyway and number three if there's any real glaring errors like always please reach out um share your knowledge so i can fix the sketch or write any wrong that i've actually done on this video to move forward to make everything look a lot better so as i said thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe for more train-tastic adventures <laughs> until next time happy model railroading